The Australian Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, speaking. The largest investment that they've made uh, in a country like Australia uh, for, for it, the entire period that they've been in existence. We spoke also about the cooperation uh, that will occur between as the Microsoft with the Australian Signals Director as well. In addition to that, um, we have a further announcement today which is the decision that we've made to explore the safe and responsible use of generative artificial intelligence in the Australian public service in partnership with Microsoft through the Digital Transformation Agency. The government will conduct a six-month trial of Microsoft 365 Copilot, making Australia one of the first governments in the world to deploy generative AI service. The Digital Transformation Agency will be able to trial new and controlled ways to innovate and enhance productivity to deliver better government services for the Australian people. Importantly as well will be the training component. We need to skill up Australia's workforce for the technologies of the future so that we can help to create the jobs of the future. And that's what this is about and it is a very exciting period. We'll run it uh, from January through to the 30th of June next year. Uh, so we've been talking with Microsoft about this announcement. That is very important. Uh, at a time of global uncertainty, uh, it is important that I'm here uh, at APEC. Uh, APEC celebrates uh, 30 years and APEC is of course an Australian creation along with Japan. Uh, we recognise that the creation of an economic forum for economies uh, in our region is so important and all of these economies are our major trading partners are here. A uh, one in four of Australian jobs depends upon our trade and an enormous proportion of that trade is represented here at APEC. So I was very pleased to accept uh, President Biden's uh, invitation to be here. And I note that every government leader uh, from the region is represented here, except I got a text message from Christopher Luxon, who has been unable uh, to, or is still in negotiations for the finalisation of the formation of, uh, of his government. Uh, apart from him, though, there will be a range of Meetings will take place uh, while I am here, including with Prime Minister Trudeau, uh, Prime Minister Shretha of Thailand, who was recently elected, uh, with other leaders as well. I look forward to catching up uh, with President Biden and President Xi uh, while I'm here, given the recent uh, meetings that we had. We have formal meetings with Prime Minister Kishida and with our other major trading partners as well. We also will be catching up with Prime Minister Marape of Papua New Guinea prior to uh, his visit uh, to Australia that will occur uh, next month, uh, where we're working through improvements in our relationship uh, with PNG. In addition to that, I look forward to catching up with President Widodo of Indonesia. Uh, catching up with him is important, uh, the relationship that we have uh, with Indonesia is, of course, one of our most significant. Uh, so, in addition to that, of course, there are businesses uh, represented here as well from the region. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be catching up with Larry Fink from BlackRock, a major investment in Australia, a major source of job creation in Australia through those investments, and catching up with other business leaders. After this, in the next uh, in the next little while, I'll be catching up with the Australian business representatives uh, here as well. Uh, but in addition to APEC, what occurs here through ABAC uh, is very important. Uh, I will be meeting also tomorrow with Governor Newsom of California. Uh, he, of course, is, is the host state uh, here uh, in San Francisco. Governor Newsom and I were due to meet uh, at uh, the San Diego uh, meeting earlier this year. He unfortunately contracted COVID at that time, so wasn't able to be present. But we have an important uh, uh, agreement 
between Australia and California, a very large economy in its own right, about clean energy technology as well. So this will be a very busy uh, period uh, on the ground over the next uh, not quite two days, uh, but uh, I really look forward to uh, forging new relationships in Australia's national interest, uh, but also uh, renewing relationships and cementing them as well with the eye always on Australia's national interest and Australia's economic interest, which is what these forums are about, which is why uh, Jim Chalmers was here earlier this week and Don Farrell, our Trade Minister, is here as well. Well, dialogue is always positive. I'm a firm believer that through dialogue comes understanding. And it's very positive that President Biden and President Xi have been able to meet. Uh, it was uh, fortunate that I was able to have discussions with uh, both of the presidents uh, about uh, their meeting and about what might be discussed as well uh, when I was in Washington, D.C. and when I was in in Beijing. Uh, it is important, and I stress this in uh, my speech to the Shangri-La Dialogue, and I conveyed uh, to uh, President Xi my view uh, that military to military discussions and dialogue is very important. Uh, we need to put in place uh, those mechanisms that are important, guardrails that were in place uh, when uh, the two world superpowers were the United States and the Soviet Union. Uh, we need guardrails to make sure that uh, we don't have uh, misunderstandings or miscalculations that could lead to uh, real issues and real conflict. We need to make sure that we put in place things that ensure that that can't occur. As President Biden has said, uh, it is crucial that uh, strategic competition does not veer into conflict. And that's what guardrails are about. But I welcome the meeting. I, I, I welcome uh, finding out uh, the details of uh, what has occurred in those meetings. But in itself, it is a very important step forward. And Prime Minister, could I ask what your message will be to other I think we uh, will be, uh, that will be uh, a topic of discussion. Uh, it's been a topic of my, uh, discussion uh, with uh, everyone I've spoken to uh, in recent times. And the fact that you have uh, some of the world's leading economies here uh, with uh, various uh, nation leaders, including the United States, of course, plays a pivotal role uh, in uh, the Middle East, and I will be having discussions with our friends in the United States, uh, as I did in Washington D.C. about uh, a way forward. Uh, we have uh, we have said uh, very clearly uh, that Israel has a right to defend itself, but how it defends itself matters as well, and we do need to, I think, uh, begin to have discussions about what happens. Uh, in the future uh, in that region, uh, in Gaza. We know that uh, Hamas, uh, not uh, a potential partner for peace because of their own position, but we need to have uh, those discussions and clearly the international community will have a role to play. Thanks.